Is it focused? I really hope this is in focus. I thought that I would try to make a video about how I started my at home pottery studio setup. And I also um, have tried doing it in a very cheap way. I tried pottery for the first time a little over a year ago and it was really fun. I loved it, but it was expensive to do the classes and I tried to become like a member at that studio, but the wait list was like two years long and never worked out. It wasn't until literally a year later, I did another set of classes in October of 2022, so just this past year, and again, I loved it. After the first class when I came home, I went online and ordered, like I decided I was going to order a wheel, and I started doing some research and I just ordered one. So since then, I've been kind of like <laughs> hardcore practicing, creating stuff, and um, just really invested in this uh, craft. So I kind of wrote down everything that I purchased and that I needed for my little studio setup and I'm going to try and stick to my notes because I tend to go off on tangents and I don't want to make this a super long video. This is basically just an outline of what I did, what I wouldn't do again, and what I would do again, and how much I spent on it. So I'm going to start... Have I explained who I am? And if I miss anything, just comment and I will respond. The first thing that I did um, was find a pottery supplier. So there is no supplier in Thunder Bay. Um, if you live in a bigger city, you might be able, you'd probably be able to find one that you can just drive to and pick stuff up. I would do that if I could, but I can't. So I order from a place called Amaranth Stoneware and it's in Kingston, Ontario. The first order that I made was very simple but it was kind of expensive because I bought a pottery wheel. So all I got in my first order was a pottery wheel, I bought 100 pounds of clay and a starter set of basic, basic, basic tools. The wheel that I got was the Artista or Artista? I feel like Artista sounds better. Um, by Speedball. It's a tabletop wheel and it is just a dial for the speed. You can get a pedal and attach that. It just comes as an attachment. So I really like it. I think it's a great wheel. I paid $845 for it before tax. In the pottery class I've taken, I've used uh, more high-end wheels like Shimpo $2,000 wheels and they're great and I can't tell a difference between those wheels and the wheel that I have. And I throw very small pieces. Like I don't think I've ever thrown anything more than three or four pounds. So um, it depends on what kind of needs you have. But as a beginner potter, you don't want to be, you're not going to be throwing things that big right away. I bought 100 pounds of clay. 100 pounds is kind of a lot. If you're just starting out, I think 50 pounds would totally suffice. Especially if you're reclaiming clay, which you probably should, you will not go through that 50 pounds very fast. If you're like me and you're like, I know I want to do pottery and I want to do a lot of it, then go ahead and get the 100 pounds because shipping is really expensive for 50 pounds. And the difference between 50 pounds of clay and 100 pounds of clay is like $10. So just get the extra 50 pounds instead of doing another 50 pounds of and then paying another $50 in a couple months, if that makes sense. I get the Laguna, uh, well it's a white stoneware by Laguna, it's a cone uh, 5 to 6 stoneware. It's a great beginner clay, I would recommend it for sure, it's pretty easy. And the cone 5 to 6 is a standard temperature. And then the last thing I bought with this first order was a basic tool set, it's called a starter set, at least on the website I ordered from. And it is just the standard stuff, like the little wood tools and, uh, you know, a little sponge and a, the wire cutter, like things you absolutely need for throwing and trimming. Okay, so those are the only things that I needed from an actual pottery supplier. Um, 
At the same time that I bought those, I also got some sponges. The ones that I got are just from Home Depot because I was I was already there, but I feel like you can kind of get these anywhere. These are in the it's called like the grouting and tiling section and I cut them into quarters and they're great for cleaning you want some cleaning sponges as well as throwing sponges this is the one that comes in the starter kit I have two of them now they're great sponges I like these for throwing I also would recommend picking up some buckets like of all different sizes really the wheel that I have comes with two buckets that work great for throwing water and like a cleaning bucket. I have a bunch of different sizes of buckets because of the way that I uh, have like a water system. I don't have running water in this room so I just carry water from upstairs and stuff but I'll get into that later. You can't really have enough buckets. The last thing that I would recommend getting for your very first startup is just some have some rag towels. Like, clay washes out of clothes, um, but once you wash and dry a light-colored towel and it has clay in it, it will stain. I just have some rag towels on hand to, that are designated for this kind of stuff. So I started out with a few, probably like three, and I was getting annoyed at how often I was having to wash them, and so I went to Value Village and we just bought a big bag of old tea towels and, and stuff like that and it was like three dollars so, so I can let you know use towels pile up for a long time before I actually have to wash them. That is what I would consider the whole startup of a at home studio to be. All the things I just listed was basically had me set up for um, over a month I didn't place my second order with the pottery supplier until at least a month and a half after this first one. All of the stuff I just mentioned cost me about $1,180. So a little bit hefty, but the wheel was like 950 bucks. So about a month and a half, two months later after I ordered this first kind of set of supplies, I was at the point where I wanted to get glazes, under glazes, um, brushes to apply those glazes, and just a few more small tools and a bit more clay. I started off just ordering 50 pounds of um, the same white Laguna clay. That was $50, and prices are all in Canadian, by the way. I tried getting these Axner underglaze pens. I got four different colors, and I thought that they would be useful for their, you know, you can squeeze them onto the clay, but they're so expensive for what they are. They were $17.50 before tax, and you're not getting a high volume of underglaze itself. It's a very small bottle. It's just not cost effective, and those little, like, needle things, the attachments, um, get clogged really fast, and you have to rinse it out. It's just not, I just don't think that it's a good design, and it's too expensive. So I would recommend, and I will in the future, just be buying underglazes by the pint, and using a small paintbrush to apply the underglaze. Like, you don't need those little pens. I don't recommend them. And then I got some glazes. I only got five different ones. Um, just mostly simple colors, like whites and blues, and like a sage, sagey color, gray color, and the ones that I got ranged from about $17 to $25. The Mako and Amico brand glazes are a little bit more on the expensive side, they're a little bit more high-end. I also got a Coyote one, and then I think it's called Opulence, Opulence glaze, and they're a little bit cheaper. Glazes in general, they're expensive, so, you know, if you're in a situation where you could, like, have a membership at a studio, um, like, to do your firing and your glazing, that would be way better. My situation currently is bringing my pieces to um, a local studio. I bring the greenware there to do the bisque firing, and I pick them up and bring them home, glaze them, bring them there again for the glaze firing, and then pick them up and bring them home again. So... It's not, it's not great, but um, that's actually my only option with a kiln, so that's just kind of how it is. I got two sets of brushes. The first one was just your basic painting brush set. It's not 
you don't, you don't need to buy it from a pottery supplier. I did just for convenience, but you can probably find it anywhere, any craft section of a store. Um, and then I also got a set of hake. It, it could be hake. You kind of want like that fluffier um, bristle for, like fine bristle for putting on uh, glazes. I got these two terrible sponges in this order as well. It was like 12 bucks for two. They are not very good. I don't recommend them. I think that these are way better. Um, these ones are not soft. They don't absorb very much. But these ones, these ones are a lot more malleable. And I just I don't like those. I don't like those pink ones. I also got the Mud Tools Workhorse sponge. It's the blue one. Uh, it's just good for throwing. It's a fantastic sponge. I love it for throwing. Definitely recommend. And I also got the Mud Tools Polymer Rib. Um, and this is another tool that I feel like just every potter has. It's a really good tool for throwing and um, trimming as well. So that whole order um, came to 350 bucks before tax. The shipping, even for just that 50 pound um, bag or box of clay was $50. So the total of shipping and tax came to $477. Soon after I made that second order with the pottery supplier Amaranth Stoneware, I ordered some things from Amazon. Not proud to support Amazon, but it's trying to be cheap. So I got this bigger set of trimming tools and carving tools and just um, like scoring tools and stuff like that. And it's a very useful set. There's a wide variety of little tools in it, but it's a very cheap, it's, it's cheap quality and it's not going to last very long. And so if you want something to last, just spend the extra money. I was trying to be cheap. I also got a ruler. A ruler is really useful for trying to make matching pieces. Um, you just have to measure to make sure that they're the same like size and shape. Uh, you can also use calipers, but I'm cheap, so I use a ruler. I also got a scale, which is not necessary to start out by any means. I got it so that I could measure my little balls of clay before throwing, so that if I'm trying to make multiples of something, I'm using the same amount every time. I also got a sculpting wheel. It's a little like hand-turning wheel with a weighted bottom. Uh, the one I got is very small. It's only 7 inches in diameter, but it is pretty good quality and I find it very useful. I'm just going to mention bats. So bats are just um, uh, little platforms that you can attach to your wheel and throw on them. And then when you're done, you can take the bat off with the piece instead of taking the piece off the wheel and potentially warping it. I really like bats. The wheel that I have, the Artista by Speedball, came with two bats, one circular and one smaller square one, and the the circular one came like deformed, and it was it wasn't level, like it was somehow just warped, and it took me ages to figure. I thought I was <laughs> thought I was just terrible. So for that reason, I don't love plastic bats. But they're pretty durable and widely used, and I wouldn't not recommend them. I just prefer MDF ones. So I tried making my own MDF bats. I uh, got my partner's help, Dustin's help, with um, with making them. I believe I got, I lost the receipt for this one, but I'm pretty sure it was just a 4x4 sheet of um, MDF. It was 3 quarters of an inch for sure. <sighs> You kind of have to be a little bit handy to make them or like have tools like we cut ours on a table saw because you want precise cuts. Some of them came out a little bit like I drilled the holes like we don't have a drill press so I drilled the holes by hand and they're not perfect. I would not recommend this route. The MDF bats that I have are already starting to like deteriorate a little bit. I would not recommend trying to make your own bats unless you know more about it. I clearly don't know enough about it. I didn't do enough research. Um, that being said, I only paid, I only paid like 45 or 50 bucks for the MDF sheet anyway. So, you know, live and learn. But anyways, I would just recommend buying bats from a pottery supply store or just go batless and just throw on the wheel and take off the the piece by hand you can always do that
Oh, another a couple other things I'll mention. I use a putty knife a lot for both cleaning and cleaning off a, a bat or a wheel when I'm throwing and making a mess. A spray bottle, very useful for a multitude of things. Like a rolling pin is very useful if you're trying to do slab building or making plates by making a slab. And another important thing is plastic, unfortunately. It's important to keep things dry, so either to dry slowly or to stop the drying process so that you can trim it in time or put on a mug handle in time or whatever. Just garbage bags or old plastic shopping bags would work. Dustin had some poly on hand and I ended up just using, just cutting a bunch of strips of that and I have a little bin of poly. I reuse it. I don't think I've thrown a single one out. I just let them dry out before I crumble them back into a ball. The other thing I would note is that it's really useful to have a mirror um, by your pottery wheel when you're throwing. It's not a necessity by any means and you could most certainly use, I think most people do use a tiny little makeup mirror, like you don't need a lot. Um, the reason I have this jumbo one is just because I had it from an old dresser that I thrifted and flipped and I wasn't using the mirror, it was just sitting in our workshop, so I thought I'd use it in this small and dungeony basement room that could use more light and mirrors. When you're throwing, you're just looking down and doing a lot of weird stuff with your neck and it's nice to be able to just look a little bit more straight and I've noticed a big difference in neck and back fatigue. Another thing, if you're... Even if you're just a small scale hobby potter, you want some kind of shelving just to keep your pots away and safe and stored. You don't want them out on your workspace. You'll probably knock them over like I do. Um, I got this one from, I bought it off Marketplace. I think I paid $10 for it. And it certainly isn't pretty, but it works. I'll also mention just the tables that I use. This first table I, my boyfriend had in his house in when we were living in London. I liked this tabletop. I didn't like the rest of the table, so we kept this the top. I just sanded it down. I should also probably mention that I throw standing up. I don't think that that's recommended. I don't think it's very popular. I have a bit of a bad back, so I decided to teach myself to throw standing up from the beginning. But that's why it might look a little strange. My throwing table is a little bit higher than my wedging table. Um, wedging tables are kind of nice to have lowered down so you can put your body weight into the wedging, but it's up to you. It's your own preference. So for this table, I actually, I started with just this one and I found that I just needed more space. So I found this one at Restore. It was $20, but I didn't like the top that it came with. And it was also like a sealed, like polyurethane plywood that was, um, it was, it just wouldn't work for the studio like you want to have exposed wood um, if possible for things like wedging because you can't wedge clay on um, like a melamine or like a plasticky kind of surface because it'll just slide you need something to get like traction and absorb absorb some of the moisture to wedge that being said if you don't have any wood surfaces you could you know, use a good little board of plywood. Um, you could wrap it in like cotton material as well to for extra absorption. You could get a, you could use an old cutting board or buy one from a thrift store and just wedge on that. Like, there's lots of options for that. I just wanted it to be easier, more functional, so I wanted all wood. The tabletop that it came with just wasn't going to work, so I decided to buy the table because it was twenty dollars and replace the plywood. The plywood that I bought was a 4x8 foot sheet maple 3 quarter inch plywood and it's 3 quarter inch so it's pretty hardy and it's probably not going to warp too much and it's, it has a pretty smooth finish, it's not going to chip up and get little chips of wood in the clay. So I'm pretty happy with it but that being said I spent like $120 on it, $117 on it after tax. And that's not cheap. I am going to be using the offcuts for our sink that we will eventually put down here in the laundry room because we're just going to DIY um, a little, you know, like to drop the sink down into, what do you call that, a table for the sink? 
Moving on. I think that's all. Okay. So, that is basically, that's all that I have to say about the equipment and furniture and... So I'm just going to quickly mention the whole, my water system, because I don't have a sink down here. And I thought it would be really shitty not having a sink down here, but it's actually not that bad. So I have a bucket system. So I go upstairs and I fill up my bucket with clean water and lug it back downstairs. When I'm going to throw, I'll just fill up, you know, a throwing bucket and a cleaning bucket with clean water. and go about my throwing. The throwing water goes into a different bucket and it just sits there until I need it because it's very useful for the reclaiming process. And then the cleaning water, mop water, whatever else goes into my waste bucket. This water I obviously don't reuse. It's, um, I mean some people will, you can reuse it for a few days if you're throwing for a few days back to back and like you're just using it to like wipe up the um, counters like you can certainly do that I don't I find I just have so much dog hair and I just want I don't, I don't know I just want to get rid of it my wastewater in that bucket and then once it accumulates which it takes a while to accumulate I will just take it out to my backyard and dump it in the back it's just it's just clay it's just dirt so it's not bad for the environment it kind of seems like a pain in the ass but it's really not that bad I don't have to do it very often. Same thing with mop water. I'll just take out the mop bucket and dump it outside. I don't use any kind of floor cleaner or soaps or detergents when I mop the floors though because you don't wanna you don't wanna be dumping the detergents in the in your yard. Sometimes I use a bit of vinegar in the water, otherwise I just use hot water. I guess the last thing is just the washing of, you know, old crusty tea towels. I mentioned I have a bunch of them. I like to keep quite a supply, but once they accumulate enough, I will wash them. So I'll go upstairs and fill up, you know, a bucket full of hot water, and then I'll just throw all the tea towels, like uh, my apron and anything else, if I have any clothes that got a ton of clay caked on. And I'll just let it soak for hours. Like it could soak for days, like who cares? I'll kind of go back whenever I remember and agitate it and rub some of the clay off. Um, to try and get as much off as possible. Whenever I get back to it, I'll just um, wring everything out and throw it in the wash. I just throw it on a hot cycle with just the tea towels and apron and whatever. Nothing else. And then I dump that water in that bucket out in the back. Same as the other waste water. If you're on septic, I would wash your stuff at a laundromat. It's not good for um, like the filtration system. Probably just it's you don't want to risk it. It's actually, it's really not that bad. The whole water system thing. Like, it sounds like a lot of work. It would be nice to have a sink. There are, um, there are some really great, like, DIY, um, clay sediment traps that you can set up. Like, you can also buy pre-made, um, you know. I don't know what the right word for them is. I don't think clay trap is the right word, but I don't know. Anyways. Everything that I have spent so far on materials, furniture, and equipment and stuff, and clay, and all that, um, total to about $1,985. So you can, you can have you can have this for under $2,000. I think I did mention this, but I don't have a kiln. Things would be different if I had a kiln that's, that's a large purchase. You need more equipment and stuff for that. If I missed anything, if you have any questions, just comment and I will answer questions. So thanks for watching and hopefully this was the slightest bit helpful. Who knows? <laughs>